I want to remind you about some of the points that Captain Watson made in his presentation. Um, explain a few of them, since some of them are using language that we use in the Earth First activist culture, like a biocentric enema. Well, I'm not going to explain to you what an enema is, but biocentrism is a fundamental principle of deep ecology. It's a term used to describe people in contrast to the norm for our civilization, which is anthropocentric people. There are older traditions of humans who were naturally biocentric, or it, as it later came to be called, ecocentric. Um, and those are the traditional peoples who live, you know, stereotypically live with the land, whether they're herders or uh, hunter-gatherers, uh, rainforest or savanna dwellers. Um, and we seem to have lost that and become more and more human-centered. In fact, our basic metaphysical maps, our spiritual religious paradigm has human beings at the top of a pyramid or right underneath God, but above all of the other uh, creatures of this planet. And in fact, we think we live on a rock that has things growing on it and living on it, rather than thinking ourselves as within one system, one organism, which another part of deep ecology got into um, talking about the Gaia hypothesis, which We'll get into some other time, but it is the idea that the Earth is not a collection of organisms, but it is one organism that has all of these suborganisms. It operates as an organism. It is um, self-regulating of the conditions it needs to stay alive. And in fact, that's very much like what a human being is. I've just been reading about how um, the microbiology, where we could be seen not just as a body that is created by um, DNA, but as hosts for getting microbes passed down generation after generation. So um, these perceptions are really important because you have to have an incredible arrogance, be extremely anthropocentric to do the destruction of nature like we do it. And so what Paul Watson is talking about is that if you develop a biocentric orientation, which is that the earth is the whole, and we are immersed in nature, and we are immersed in these ecosystems. There's no point where I end and the rest of the ecosystem starts. We are all a continuous ecosystem with this kind of material illusion of being a separate, discrete organism or human being or biological carrier of a spirit entity choose your model. So Paul is saying, we need a biocentric enema. People just really need to get it because we are all so disconnected that we're not remotely dealing with any of our problems. And especially since most of our problems are simply symptoms of our way of life. So if we change our way of life, <laughs> we solve our problems. The ones that we can still solve. So he talked about gorilla warfare versus... Um, anthropocentrism. So he brings up the paradigm of warfare, and he also later on talks about how there is a war against the planet. Well, if that is an accurate perception, then that would justify there being warriors on behalf of the planet. And that is how people in Earth first tend to see themselves, but nonviolent warriors. And in fact, despite some of Paul's rhetoric, um, his way of doing activism has always been nonviolent direct action. The Sea Shepherd Society hasn't killed anybody or hurt anybody. Um, and as far as the publicly known activism of Paul Watson, he hasn't done it in anything that anybody knows about. Um, so that's another thing, too, is, is how did he make you feel? Did he make you feel awkward, defensive? Was he challenging you and the way you look at things? Or did he inspire you? Did you go, right on, man, say it like it is? You know, uh, one of the, the 
memes that went around Earth versus uh, fuck the human race, there was definitely a lot of uh, anthropocentric anthropocentrism. Not, it was meant not... Well, some people jokingly talked about human extinction. We had the voluntary uh, human extinction movement, I think. Something like that. <laughs> Which was, uh, yeah, you could go ahead and commit suicide and that'd be better for the rest of the biosphere, but it was also about um, not reproducing so that when you go, you're gone and you don't leave more consumers after you in your wake uh, to continue the, the purging or the um, plundering of the planet. Um, so um, that would also justify a response to being polluted and killed by hooker chemical um, the way you would defend yourself in any situation of self-defense. So um, it, it's, a, it's used in the metaphors of war and self-defense, but it's not really um, manifested in violent actions. It's more to get people out of the notion that um, just being a liberal and having sentiments that are the correct ones, but not really having a warrior's attitude, a warrior's persistence, um, is, uh, is inadequate. Uh, Edward Abbey, an inspiration of Earth First, the fiction and nonfiction writer, said that sentiment without action is the ruin of the soul. And... Uh, I agree with that. I do. Um, I've been doing this my whole life. I'm 61, and I've just seen everyone get sucked away in their little anthropocentric vision. So um, that is, I think, the basic challenge of Paul Watson. He talked about McLuhan, too. Yeah, and so he, this is also why he justifies sinking whaling ships, and that's why I, I played um, Dwight Worker's performance of Sink It at the 1993... Mount Graham, Arizona, Round River Rendezvous, um, which is actually, he, wrote a, he, he has sunk whaling ships and drift netting ships, and he wears this little lever that was a um, souvenir from one of his actions. And, um, and then his um, fellow performer, Julie Alexander, uh, held held that thing up when she was doing her reading at the very, very end of that. And uh, he wrote this little pamphlet, 16-page pamphlet, called Sink It, and he took that pamphlet and turned it into that poem. So um, that's, that's really fabulous. I recite that sometimes at Earth First events, since Dwight doesn't circulate among the movement much anymore. And there were also smaller offshoot groups in, um, from the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. So it wasn't the only group that was engaged in both going out there and getting in the way of, for example, whale hunters or baby harp seal clubbers, or going out in the middle of the night during the off season, the middle of the winter, and sinking unattended whaling ships or drift net ships. Okay, um, part of Indian tradition is that braves would dance out and act out certain things and tell stories. Well, I was asked to, uh, uh, well, I first wanted to thank you because I, in my life, had never read any of my poems to more than two people at once. And um, I was afraid to, afraider than on other actions I had done. And uh, on Tuesday night, I just felt like uh, people here were wild enough and crazy enough so they could accept it. So. Uh, I've always considered myself kind of like there's an antichrist, I'm the anti-humanist, but uh, uh, I just wanted to thank you for the strength and wildness and confidence and, and love. So we're going to do it again, sync it, and Julie uh, Alexander is going to participate in this. Okay, so here we go. This is called Sink It. Cut it and bash it and break it and sink it. Scuttle it and stuff it most any way you can. Maybe we're just grains of sand in their gears of destruction, but do it, do it, do it, if you can. Now, if you can get aboard without getting caught, then you're over half the way there. 
Now hide yourself on the deck and wait it out to see if anyone comes. For if they have seen you and they're coming to get you, better to go down for trespass than sabotage. If no one comes, then break into the boat. Pick that lock or bust it. Cut it or torch it or pry it from its hinge and then get inside quickly before anyone sees or hears. Drop down into the engine room. You may find another door locked. Bust this one open just like the other. They can't see you now. Now you're all surrounded by tons of machines and gauges and pipe. The ultimate robot man's dream for those with only oil for blood, for those with only pistons firing for heartbeats. Find the sea cock quickly. It's where they let the water in to cool the engines, fight fires, wash decks or whatever. It's this valve we're gonna do in. First shut it off completely, then take the handle off the valve stem. Then with the crescent or pipe wrench, disconnect the pipes bolted to it. Take it off completely. It may take some time. Pull out, pull out all the studs and bolts until the pipe drops wide open, just waiting to gush. Then put your pipe wrench on the valve stem and open it all the way. And what do you see below you? Seawater exploding all over this place. But don't stop now. Pull on the pipe wrench as hard as you can until the valve is jammed wide open. Then take your wrench and bash that valve stem hard. Bend it, break it, jam it so it's locked open with tons of seawater pouring through it. Soon this valve will be underwater, impossible for anyone to close by hand. Hey, your work is almost over. Baby, this ship is about to hit the fan. Now gather up, gather up your tools out of the engine room, but before you close the door, Toss in a tear gas canister for good measure, and then put your own padlock on that door. Now, ease your tools into the harbor. Not with a splash, because they're as heavy as lead. I know it's a terrible waste to throw them away, but just try explaining those bolt cutters to a cop instead. Now, get off the boat and GTFO. GTFO out of the harbor, out of the city. GTFO out of the country. GTFO out of this world. They'll be looking for you shortly. Remember, S-I-N-K, sink, is a four-letter word. So just get the fuck out and keep going. You don't want to go down just like the boat. I want you to live on to become the serial sinker. I want your warrior rights intact. It's okay to gloat. So. Help that drift netter drift down to the bottom. Stick that harpoon up any boat's ass that's been killing whales. Dump that toxic dumping ship straight down to its own burial grounds. After all, this is just recycling on a grand scale. So cut it and bash it and break it and sink it. Scuttle it and stop it most any way you can. Maybe we're just grains of sand in their gears of destruction, but do it, do it, do it if you can. I pray, do it, do it, do it, if you can. Thanks. Uh-huh.